Lessons.com continuing my video series on the correspondence team match played between my video lessons group and the team Carpe Diem. This was played on board 170. Our man is King's Ambassador and he's playing against Fulvio Cagnazzi. And this is kind of a comedy of errors. There's a couple of critical points where uh, both sides just are not paying attention. So uh, let's see what happened here. Okay, we have. Uh, kind of an English opening, I guess. Uh, I'm not too sure about this next move by White to, to attack the bishop. It it blocks a good square to put this to put this pawn on. Um, you know, White should just be developing his pieces, thinking about getting castled. And anyway, uh, White's going to ignore uh, casting on the king side for a while. I was almost wondering if he was going to try to castle queen side here, as we will see. But you know, neither side's challenging the other one, and. Uh, See here, here what I mean. Here's what I mean: is White trying to castle queenside, uh, but Black has a safe and solid position. White's position is fine too. Uh, the game is objectively even. I'm not. Uh, I guess the idea of a6. I've been criticizing these rook pawn moves. Here kind of makes sense if Black is trying to play c4, keep a knight out of b5, you know, so that the queen can stay on c7. Now this is thematic in this type of position. But black surprises me and doesn't play c5 and instead plays d5. Guess I had a change of heart, decided to open up a diagonal for this bishop. Uh, anyway, game's still staying even and uh, not too sure about knight g4. I mean, what is this doing? Uh, black needs, let's back this up. Black needs to castle. Okay, this is just simple and safe and sound. Okay, knight d4 doesn't do anything. It moves a piece a second time in the opening. Uh, black shouldn't be thinking about taking on f2 because that just gives up uh, two minor pieces for the rook and pawn, and the two minor pieces will eventually uh, uh, rule rule in this case. So anyway, white decides he's going to stop that nonsense. He should have just allowed it, develop a piece. You know, let's put the rook on d1, okay? Maybe you'll put it on c1 if you think the uh, d file, or, or, you know, if you think you might want to open up the c file. Anyway, uh, now black clearly doesn't pay attention here. This this is just a, a blunder of a pawn, and black is not paying attention. Forgets that there's a knight on c2. That's not a normal square for a knight. Uh, sometimes in the English it is. And black has just lost a piece with a completely losing game. Yet black is going to win this. You know, just amazing. Uh, what can I say? <laughs> uh, White is just having his way here, and uh, there's really not much comment over the next several moves. Uh, Black still hasn't bothered to castle, and he's helping White out by trading pieces. There are Black castles. And, you know, it just should be a simple routine win for White. And... White just kind of fumbles around a little bit. Black's not doing much. And hey, look, let's trade some more pieces. Thank you very much. And here comes the point where White starts to go wrong. Uh, I mean, his next move is fine. It shouldn't have lost him the game. But it's going to create weaknesses that were unnecessary. Uh, a simple safe move is just put the rook on d1. Double up. Get ready to trade, some, trade off both sets of rooks. And easily win this ending. Uh, but he decides to kick the knight out. And, you know, he's actually heading this knight towards a good square, d4. It's a nice square for the knight if black can keep it there. And that d4 square becomes pivotal here in a few minutes. Now he, now he develops the rooks. But here's the difference. Black's able to blockade the file. Uh, yet, uh, white uh, fumbles a little bit. I guess he thinks, well, hey, I've got three attackers on there. He has two defenders. I'm winning another pawn. Well, this is true, but let's just back it up. Uh, whoops, instead of f4, you know, just, just play this move. If, if black wants to try to control d4, let him get there on his own. Don't just force him there. Okay, let's try that. Well, guess what? I get to trade off a set of rooks. How do you want to take? You want to take back with the knight and deactivate your knight? Then I'm going to get complete control of the d-file. Okay. Uh, look. Rook takes check. Queen takes. Queen d2. 
what does black have? Well, now he has knight d4, and as long as white doesn't play something silly like bishop one, f1, uh, well, you got to watch out. This is still a threat. Well, just bring the king closer, okay? Or, and, and really, what does black have? You know, he can't grab the pawn on b3. It's pinned. The knight's pinned. So this just leads to a routine win for white. So, you know, I'm sure white was just playing, uh, rushing his moves and not paying attention. Uh, because watch what happens. Okay, so he drives it in the direction of d4, and it comes in, and and uh, White says, "Hey, look, I went a pawn." Okay, fine. And all of a sudden, Black has some counterplay. Uh, there's a pin on that rook, and and uh, White needed to stop and take a breather and figure this thing out. Instead, he blunders. The correct move is to play b4. You need to drive this queen off the uh, uh, off this diagonal, okay? So, like for instance, if pawn takes, you know, if pawn takes, pawn takes, and queen takes, the pin is broken. Yeah, we lost a pawn. Well, actually, you can't take that pawn because d8's hanging. You have to retreat the queen, and then white happily. Whoops! Didn't mean to drop it there. White happily trades rooks, and a simple routine win for the white pieces. Okay, queen e3, queen d1 check really doesn't go anywhere. And, you know, white wins this easily. But uh, white gets outwits himself and plays queen e3. And suddenly there's a little surprise. You know, he thinks the pin is broken. But the pin isn't broken. And all of a sudden... Look what's happening. If rook d3, there follows queen takes, rook takes, and now the rook on d1 is loose, and black's winning the exchange and will win this game. So it's a big whoops. Oh, let's just back up. There was one other thing I didn't show uh, after b4. If takes, takes. Uh, black can part with the queen for two rooks. But this is this is clearly in uh, in White's favor. Okay, so back it up. Queen e3 is played, and then all of a sudden Black's back in the game, and he oh, doesn't play rook e3. He plays king f2. Okay, king f2, and now Black's winning winning uh, a, a rook for free, and instead of being down a piece, he's up the exchange. Kind of sad, huh? And now that pawn runs, starts running. Now white obliges with a queen trade. Black's happy to do that, but he doesn't have to hurry to do it. And white obliges him. So let's just trade queens. And now suddenly white realizes he can't take this pawn because black has rook takes uh, e4 check and the pawn runs. So white backs his bishop up. And white needs to play king d2 here, but after bishop f1, the pawn goes to d2, and suddenly black is going to make a queen, and white must lose his bishop. So the continuation would be, and black has a very easy win. Okay, so. What can I say? This is chess. you got to pay attention, okay? <laughs> and I thank you so much for watching. I'll be back soon with another video. There was another uh, set of results in. Take care.